In this episode, I'm gonna share 5 years experience having a tender garage and a gigantic swimming platform. The truth in good and bad. One of the features making this almost a pocket yacht that for many years have stand out among its competitors is the tender garage. Not to forget its generous swimming platform as a consequence of this solution. And just for the fun of it, this swimming platform feels even more spacious than the one you find on a Swan 95. However, the quality and finish is not to be compared and not the point here. Only trying to put things in a perspective to understand the impressive dimensions we are talking about, being only a 55. I really love my swimming platform. It's such a great place for entertaining, for having a beach club party. Um, yeah, it's just like when you're in paradise like this and uh, you have the swim ladder out, it's like basically having your own gigantic swimming pool and uh, your own what you say like uh, your own dock or yeah it's it's just amazing but it has its downsides as well a big swimming platform that folds out like this and with a tender garage is nothing new but for 10 to 15 years ago this concept was normally only to be seen on much bigger yachts at least in the sailing world but now it's getting more normal on even mass production yachts so the question is if a 55 is big enough to have this solution and also how do I look at similar halfway solutions after having this myself for almost 5 years. So let's start with the swimming platform as this was one of the important bullets on my list trying to find my next boat that I'm still sailing. You can see the entire video about why I ended up with B3 in episode 43 where I already admitted this solution was a compromise. So it's time to evaluate this solution as I now feel qualified to have an opinion. One of the compromises is of course the consequence of the tender garage and I will come back to more about the garage further out here. I wanted a big swimming platform and for sure B3 delivers on this. However due to the tender garage and freeboard the easy access to the water is debatable. So this was one of the compromises I was willing to accept because the tender garage was also high up on my priorities. It's tempting to sing the Rolling Stones, you can't always get what you want, but I'm gonna spare you for this. Everyone understands this is just magical, and when it's like this I forget about all the downsides having a big swimming platform that folds out, but not entirely, because when it's done I always have to be on watch. The challenge with a solution like this is in down position is just too close to the water. And again this is a compromise, as the upside is how easy it is getting my dinghy in or out the tender garage. The problem is of course wake after other boats that potentially could destroy your lifting arms due to the momentum and the way it's designed. In this perspective it's too close to the water in open position. On the positive side it's amazing to have this dock to dock solution as I like to call it after being out shopping. Making it very easy and effective especially for me being alone carrying everything aboard. It's like having a private dinghy dock. But then you have to look out for this kind of boaters that easily without understanding could destroy my day. Wakes like this could potentially be enough to at least needing to recalibrate the lifting arms. A solution seen on more expensive and bigger yachts is the option to lift the platform higher above the surface once it's in full open position. A remote controller is therefore necessary as you need to close your garage when leaving the boat. If you did not know the reasons behind this it could look like a cool shove off thing. But it's adding more computers and controllers that's also a success formula for more things that can fail. So this is the downside of a complex solution that also can be pretty expensive to fix. I know this firsthand, and also that it's not always plug and play when replacing damaged lifting arms. Just as a side note, it was a forklift on the hard that killed my lifting arms. Now it turns out uh, I think I have the answer and it's the controller, the computer. If you have watched earlier episodes you know I sorted this out so I'm not gonna spend time on this now. It's only to give you a realistic idea of what you can expect. 
On the positive side, I got what I wanted as a solo sailor. Close transom and high freeboard, turning it into a boat that's when you're not invited, very difficult to enter. Even from a dinghy and impossible from the water, at least without making noise that would wake me up. As when someone tried to border me leaving me this primitive souvenir. End of the day, it will always be compromises, and some are important to know about understanding what your priorities will mean and if it's acceptable to you. To summarize my opinions about my swimming platform, I have made the pros and cons in this list. My safety as solo sailor have a high priority, so it still covers my most important need, having a yacht being difficult to enter uninvited. It also works very well for getting tender in and out, and even as a platform for maintenance on dinghy as well as the outboard. Great size for the be free dinghy dock parties and for fun in the sun. Being stern too in a marina with low pontoons makes easy exit without a passerelle. Also turn out to be a great privacy feature at anchor. It's impossible to suddenly have someone standing in your cockpit, as it's of course not always what you want. On the downside, it's even though very solid build, a fragile solution with the lifting arms. In my opinion, the platform is sitting too low above the surface, with no option to lift it higher up. You will have wave limitations, and like jumping off for a quick swim mid-ocean could be a very rare opportunity. And of course the added complexity with more service points and also more that could fail. Not to forget ridiculous expensive if things get damaged. And you, as you might understand by now, there is uh, compromises and is positive sides and negative sides of almost all kind of constructions and designs, and especially on a sailboat. Uh, my dinghy rush, uh, it has its sides. I'm still in love with it, and my swimming platform also has its flaws, but I'm also still in love with that. And honestly, I think uh, if I was going to buy uh, a new boat again today, I think I would be uh, tempting to go for the same solution. Uh, of course, optimal would be to have the possible to lift the platform after it's open, uh, but uh, that's obviously an expensive solution. <laughs> It's not like this yacht could not easily fit a fair sized dinghy on its flush deck, or even having one hanging under the cockpit arch, that's almost mandatory on a long distance sailboat. When making this in Greece they were surprised I did not want it to also carry my dinghy. But back then it was different rules for the Panama Canal, so I wanted this construction including the solar not to extend the overall length of B3, because the arch would needed to be swept aft quite a lot for having this option adding to the overall length. But most important, the aesthetic in my eyes and to keep the weight down. And the tender garage was one of the reasons for buying this boat. They even laughed when I had to explain the two hoops was not for lifting a dinghy, but for my hammock. This is still one of my favorite spots on my boat, with nothing interfering for my view. I have been thinking of adding a solution for lifting my dinghy, and will come back to this. Just as my friend Kylie and almost everyone else I know, I also are used to have it like this. But for this adventure, a tender garage was high up on my list for several reasons. Most important was to have the weight down and also a free sight aft. No worries about waves destroying things in big seas, and even to keep things out of sight for opportunists. In Caribbean it's lock it or lose it. So the concept and idea keeping weight down and dinghy out of sight is great and works as expected. At least it did so, with the old tiny dinghy in combination with the small outboard that came with this pocket yacht making it a really great concept, very easy and fast process. Interesting enough that this tiny dinghy did cover my needs, at least in Europe. Still, it looks a bit funny for a yacht certified for all oceans with 16 persons on board. In the Caribbean, the distance to things are greater. Also, at least for me, it's more interesting to go on diving expedition or other adventures. But even shopping can be a distance away from your anchorage, so a tender that comes out of the water was soon something I wanted. For this you need a minimum hull length, and of course bigger engine. 
So my new challenge was to find a dinghy that would fit inside my tender garage, because it obviously have some limitations. The first dinghy I bought in the Caribbean was perfect for me, extreme lightweight and could move straight into my garage. However, I was too obsessed with size and forgot to do research about quality. Most of its time it lived in my garage due to the pandemic and lockdowns, protected against weather and the strong Caribbean UV. Yet it did not even survive two years before falling apart everywhere. So this time I wanted a quality dinghy, but after 2022 the tubes have in general increased in diameter. Which is of course due to evolution in this segment. But for my tender garage this is now a new challenge. Meaning I got another compromise to accept. The first was I no longer could easily get my dinghy inside without taking the outboard off. Now I also have to accept to deflate the dinghy to reduce the 5 cm it extend the available space. I could kept this one as it worked very well and for the tender garage it was perfect. The new compromise I now was willing to accept was the time I saved flying away in this eats up the time of inflating and putting the outboard on after taking it out of the garage. More hassle but greater freedom and more fun. As I mentioned earlier here it's plenty of space for carrying a dinghy. In fact for some years I even carried the original as a backup dinghy on the coach roof as you can see here secured a bit extra riding out Hurricane Elsa. But I sold it as I prefer the new latest one even with the compromises. And I wanted to come back to my original idea, keeping B3 nice and tidy with no extra on deck. Not only the visual, but the fact I don't like loose items in heavy weather sailing. And also store extra weight as low as possible. For today's standard I would say the garage is slightly too narrow, even though the depth inside is sufficient enough for 6 person dinghy. The 270 and the 340 have the exact same beam, but the 340 felt too heavy for me alone, especially when going to a beach. I could probably spend more time finding the perfect dinghy as well, but Carib Marine in Martinique made me an offer impossible to resist. A tender garage takes some space on a 55, and it's a question if this solution is the right for such a small yacht, even though the idea is great. Don't take me wrong, I love my tender garage, and the dinghy might take less space than you think. For me this is still a great solution, however it's for a fact that a yacht this size could have pretty spacious aft cabins if not having a tender garage. And knowing how much space it's under the garage floor as well, this model for sure could have an epic aft cabin. Just as you find on many center cockpit yachts and even utilize the space different making a third double cabin as well. And again it's always a compromise and we are all different in terms of what we are willing to sacrifice, at least within a normal budget on a mass production yacht. I would say a 55 is borderline for having this solution, might be better in a 65 footer as you get the extra wide hull, giving place to a bigger dinghy and not necessarily sacrificing space from the aft cabins. Also a bigger yacht costs more to start with and can easier handle the increased cost of a better solution for the garage door. This might now sound like a surprise, but I'm still happy with this solution, I'm accepting the original and even the new compromises. Because it also was an evolution from my side, wanting a bigger and faster dinghy. Still plenty of space, keeping all the things out of the way and the weight down, so to me this is still a success formula. Still, I'm gonna share my verdict on having this solution with a tender garage. The strongest argument is a safe storage of the dinghy sailing in all weather conditions. Also storing the weight lover on board is always good. It's really nice to not have a dinghy blocking the view aft and of course keeping it out of the sun and out of sight for criminals as well. On the downside it's reasons to discuss if this yacht is too small. It takes some space from the aft cabins. The garage was perfect for smaller dinghy, but slightly too narrow for the dinghy a yacht like this deserves. Increased complexity and of course it's an expensive solution, both in manufacturing but also in maintenance and to fix if broken. So with these compromises and the extra work having a bigger dinghy, you will often see me towing it instead of storing it. This is when I just moving be free a short distance. Hence the fact I have been thinking of adding a dinghy lift exactly for this purpose. 
So a halfway tender garage, even smaller than this, is from my experience not a good solution. On B3 it works, but it's a borderline, and also my own choice with a bigger and faster dinghy. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, I would be very happy to see you subscribe, and even hit the notification bell to not miss the next episode. I choose to share things uh, from my point of view and to be honest in what's good and bad because I want to be transparent. There is uh, sometimes people want to copy what I do or even buy the same boat and I just want people to know all the good things and the bad things. So then it's not much more to say than uh, stay safe, uh, all the best, take care, cheers.